Welcome to the Black Talk Media Project's new media question and answer webinar. Um, we are doing the classes a little different, uh, but we do have these classes every Saturday from 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern to 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern. The focus of the first hour of this class will be using music in podcasts and streams. Podcasting is really starting to take off. It has been getting more popular over the years as uh, people are getting these new devices and are able to connect to the internet on the go, uh, right from the palm of their hand. And they have been consuming a whole lot of podcasts. Now, podcast just simply refers to um, a recorded video or recorded audio file and you put that out there and it's called a podcast. So if it's recorded content, it's a podcast. So with podcasting getting real, real, real popular, um, you have the music industry that is taking a look um, at this emerging uh, field, I guess I could call it. And a lot of podcasters, and this is something I noticed back in 2007 when I first got into it. And I wasn't really aware of all of the different rules concerning uh, broadcasting on the internet as well as just uploading podcasts to the internet. Um, I have become a lot more informed by keeping up with the industry news. And so um, now I don't use copyrighted music uh, at all uh, in my broadcast or in my podcast because I do not want uh, these uh, music companies coming after me or putting claims on content that I produce simply because I may have used um, maybe just 30 seconds of a copyrighted song. So if you can avoid it, it's best to avoid that. Then you won't have to worry about that going down the road. But the first thing I would like to start this class on is about the uh, new administration. Um, anytime you get a new president a new CEO of the United States in office, things can change. Things can change in many different areas. And so with the election of Donald Trump, uh, you have the music industry congratulating him on becoming the CEO of USA and asking him to start uh, uh, forcing uh, strict enforcement of copyright laws and intellectual property. Again, if we shouldn't be using copyrighted stuff, if we don't have permission to use it, if we don't have the appropriate license to use it, all we're doing is setting ourselves up to be sued later on down the road. Now, as a platform for those who are thinking about building their own broadcasting slash podcasting platforms and possibly opening up that platform to others, um, this will pertain to you. Uh, like Black Talk Radio Network, we have a platform where we distribute content uh, in the form of digital radio stations that are streaming content 24-7. Uh, either it's live or they have uploaded podcasts to the station or those who are uploading podcasts to Black Talk Radio Network. So, those who manage those type of platforms need to be keeping an eye on anything that may change in as it relates to what we're doing. So the first article that I want to share is this article that came out uh, last year, December the 14th, um, Donald Trump Music Industry Sends an Open Letter. Okay, so again, this was published in December after the election. So let me uh, just read a little bit to you. Uh, 19 different music organizations banded together to write an open letter to President-elect Donald Trump congratulating him on his win and urging him to enforce intellectual property laws during his term as president. Congratulations on your election to serve as the 45th president of the United States, the letter says. We look forward to working with you and your administration on behalf of American music, one of our nation's most valuable forms of art and intellectual property, and a powerful driver of high-quality U.S. jobs and export, exports. The letter, which was signed by organizations including Broadcast Music Incorporated, 
Nashville Songwriters Association International, the Recording Academy, Recording Industry Association of America, ASCAP, and the Songwriters Guild of America request that Trump honor his promises to enforce laws that protect intellectual property, quoting his stance on the issue, intellectual property is a driving force in today's global economy, a constant innovation. So, um, let me go on. Uh, the organization's requests are in line with past initiatives to push tech giants to do more to prevent piracy. They write, with the rise of the digital economy, it has become even more critical that we protect intellectual property rights and preserve freedom of contract rather than create regulatory barriers to creative growth and innovation. So this applies to those who manage platforms. Again, like our platform, Black Talk Radio um, Network, uh, where we have independent black media producers who either manage a radio stream or they are uploading podcasts to our platform or they're doing both. And so as a, a, a platform manager, I would, this would uh, apply to us. All right. And I'm going to give you more context with another um, it's not an article, but it's a petition that came out that's being circulated. And this is, um, it says, Open Media, this is the organization that put out this um, this petition, says, I am, I am sorry, I'm afraid I can't allow you to post that. Tell the Copyright Office, stop the internet censorship machine. And I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, more in depth later in explaining how this relates to us. But it says, stop the censorship machine. Dangerous new censorship proposals are on their way. Lobbyists for the music and publishing industries are pulling out. All the stops to impose censorship machinery on the American people via extreme new copyright rules. They want to force websites to build expensive robot programs to spy for copyrighted material. This means they will block content before you post it before you've done anything wrong and violate your free expression online. U.S. copyright lobbyists even wrote to Trump attacking civil society efforts for fairer copyright and calling our desire to protect free expression dangerous. So new rules could pass quickly unless we show the U.S. copyright office just how many Americans oppose this censorship path plan. Now, I'm kind of conflicted on this because even if you are a podcast producer, that is your intellectual property, okay? That is your property. And so think about this. How would you feel if you produce podcasts or videos, then someone downloaded and copied those, that which you have produced, and then they upload it somewhere else and they're collecting revenue off of content that you created that they're not sharing with you. You wouldn't like that, would you? I wouldn't like that, okay? Um, um, the only way that that's okay is if I'm uh, distributing my content under a share, share alike. You know, you have these different licenses that you can give to podcasts that tells people what they can and cannot do. Uh, you can give them permission to to uh, download it, chop it up, mix it, however they want to mix it, um, but they have to give you credit and what have you. Um, so you can issue these under different licenses. So if a podcaster simply looks at the music artist as a person who has created content that is their intellectual property that they want to control and that they don't want others to profit off of without giving them a cut, then you will be sympathetic to, to the artists. Okay. So we are artists as broadcasters, as podcasters. So this, this, um, it, it's a two way street, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now what they're talking about, this applies more to platforms as um, um, in addition to individuals. But if you manage a platform, what this is saying that 
if you upload, if you allow clients who get a membership or get a subscription and they're able to upload content to your platform that you are managing, that you have to have some kind of way that it will detect any copyrighted music that is in that content that's being uploaded. And it, it it's supposed to prevent it from being uploaded and what have you. Right now, the way it is, is that if someone up, uploads, well, YouTube is different. But right now, most of these platforms that have podcasting or allow you to upload stuff, they do not take it down until they get a complaint. When somebody files a complaint or flags it and says, hey, this person is using uh, my intellectual property in their podcast, I did not give them permission, and they do not appear to have a license and what have you, then that platform manager has to take that down after they verify what has been stated, after they verify that this person did indeed use copyrighted material without proper permissions and licensing. So we will have to take it down. Now, YouTube, I mentioned YouTube. How is YouTube different? Well, YouTube has a has an agreement in place with the music industry where if you use copyrighted content in your videos, then they won't take it down, but they have already, and again, YouTube is owned by Google. Uh, Google is one of the largest tech firms in the world. So obviously they have the money to invest to detect this sort of things, to set up a type of platform that's gonna automatically detect that. It costs a lot of money, I, I, I suppose, to, to get that technology into your platform. So YouTube did that. So you may notice if you upload content to YouTube, again, whether that's an audio podcast with just a graphic, um, like we do with many of our talk radio podcasts, or if it is, let's just say, a video of yourself, but you're using music in that. Well, YouTube's platform will detect that. It will detect what copyrights you have, and it will alert the copyright holders. And then those copyright holders, they won't take your video down. What they will do is monetize your video. Okay, the, the ads revenue that is generated by your video will go to those copyright holders and not to you. Okay, so as a platform manager, we have to we have to really, really, really be careful. This is one of the things, reasons why I wanted to do this class and why I'm also recording it is because we have to protect ourselves from the music industry, and again, I'm not trying to paint the music industry as being wrong for wanting to protect artists and, and other content uh, producers. You know, uh, I don't want anybody taking from me and not using uh, um, and using my content without permission. Okay, so I, I feel them. I know where they're coming from. So that is why I'm going to start, you know, just letting people know. Letting people know when you upload copyrighted content of what's going on and there's no need for you to use copyrighted content, especially if you're doing a talk radio podcast. Now, obviously, it depends on what type of program or podcast you're producing. If you're producing a music industry a podcast where you're talking about music and stuff like that. Now, I have read that you can you play the copyrighted music if you are reviewing the music, if you are commenting on the music, that you can get around copyright laws. You'll be covered by fair use laws, uh, meaning that you know you're not looking to you're not a music station. The only reason you're playing this music is because you're a music reviewer and so that is why you're sharing the music okay uh, um so those are some of the caveats um some of the different things you have to be aware of now let me get to another article give me just a moment as i try to get there
this uh, video seems to be preventing me or this software seems to be preventing me from getting to my bookmarks so give me a moment as I adjust my screen so I can get to what I need to get to okay let me see webinar class all right beware of music in your podcast it's an article from 2015 that I wanted to share because it's applicable to what we are talking about so let's w let that load up uh, this was pro uh, posted in the bro uh, broadcast law blog let me see you can get there at broadcastlawblog.com so this is an article they wrote in February of 2015 so that would be two years ago um, it's under intellectual property beware of music in your podcast Chow, sound exchange ASCAP BMI and, and uh, SESAC don't give you the rights that you need so what, what are they talking about alright let me point this out first before we go into this if you have are operating a digital radio station Okay, that means that you're pretty much running a, dig a radio station like a terrestrial radio station would be running it. And like terrestrial radio stations, you do have to have music licenses that you pay. Um, I think you pay it on a yearly basis, and then it may be a month-to-month -month fee involved. I'm not sure about terrestrial radio, but uh, in terms of internet radio, I know that to be the case. All right, so you you do have to have your station covered if you're playing copyrighted music now from what i have heard from talking to people i ha i asked this question years ago um but also it is being shared with you in this uh broadcast law blog that even if you have a license even if you went to ascap bmi sesac and you got a license that only covers your radio stream it does not cover podcasts period at all period I, 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 I remember reaching out to a company that provided internet licensing for radio streams and I had mentioned to the person and I just wanted clarification from somebody in the industry I said you know um, I don't use cop I, I, when I use copyrighted music when I post my podcast, I chop it out. I chop it out. This was back, you know, when I was first getting started. So I would use copyrighted music sometimes, but I knew that it wasn't covered. It, it may have been a license would cover the stream, but it wouldn't cover the podcast. So I would take it out. And that person said, you're right. You're, you're right to do that because the uh, internet radio station license does not cover the podcast. That's entirely separate. And so what I found from uh, uh, doing more research and pre preparation for today's class, I found that it doesn't cover podcasts, period. It doesn't cover it. You got a license for your station. You didn't get a license for podcasts. That would be something separate. So let's just read a little bit about uh, what they had to say. This, again, is a, a broadcast law, a blog. And they're talking about beware of music in your podcast. All right, this was written by David Oxenford, February the 3rd, 2015, almost two years ago to the day. Last week, I listened in to a presentation by Rain News providing an excellent overview of the digital music industry. Their white paper setting out the findings reported during the presentation is available here. One station in that presentation suggested to me today's topic, the use of music in podcasts. In the Rain presentation, a statement was made that most major podcasts are spoken word, but no explanation of the fact was provided. One of the biggest reasons for the lack of music in podcasts has to do with rights issues as the royalties paid to Sound Exchange and even to ASCAP, BMI, and SESAC don't apply to traditional podcasts. Let me say it again. Don't apply to traditional podcasts 
meant to be downloaded onto a digital audio recording device like an iPhone or any other smartphone, but also your personal computer, anything that you can download uh, content from the internet uh, with. So that that would cover your smartphones, your tablets, um, and your desktop computers, your laptops. Um, So they go on to say, we wrote a warning about this issue a couple of years ago. But as the popularity of podcasts seem to once again be on the rise, the warning is worth repeating. The rights that a broadcaster or digital music company gets from ASCAP, BMI, and SESAC, commonly called the pros or performing rights organizations, deal with the public performance of music. The pros license the music, musical work or musical composition, the lyrics, and the notes that make up the song. They do not license particular recordings of the song. As we have discussed before in other contexts, a public performance is a transmission of a copyrighted work to multiple people outside your limited friends and family. So what they're talking about is not music that you're playing in your house where people in the house can hear your music. Uh, No, they're talking about a digital radio station or a podcast where you have the public tuning in or downloading, all right? Uh, But they're strictly talking about, I think, streaming right here. All right, so sound exchange royalties also deal with public performance, but it is licensing the public performance of the sound recording, the words and music as recorded by a particular artist. And Sound Exchange only licenses such performances where they are made by a non-interactive service where the user cannot determine what songs it will hear next and where the service meets certain other requirements. See our article here for some of those additional requirements. Podcasts, before I jump into the next uh, piece they talking about, Again, um, the rules are kind of complicated. Some people say they are intentionally complicated, but this would also uh, um, apply to music stations where you're taking song requests, okay? So there are certain rules that even apply to that. So there is a whole lot of stuff that people need to know if they want to protect themselves by making their streams legal and making their podcasts legal. You know, they say they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You do not want to find yourself on the wrong end of these lawsuits. And it's just simply not worth the risk to me because most of the people who are associated with, with what we're doing through Black Talk Radio Network, we're talk radio. We're talking about issues. We're talking about news. We're we're having dialogue with the listeners. We are not music. We're not a music station. Now, we do share music on our station, but it is music that we have attained permission from. This is music that artists have submitted to us wanting us to put their music out there. And this is mostly independent artists um, that aren't signed to any of these pros or major labels and and things of that nature. Uh, You can get permission from the copyright holder. All right. So, I mean, I'm just saying music can enhance your podcast, but people aren't, if, if I'm doing a talk radio show called Black Talk Radio News, people are not tuning in to hear me play uh, a public enemy, they not hear Curtis Blow, Marvin Gaye, it, they not call, they not tuning in to hear me play music. They tuning in to hear me talk about issues. So, so while music can enhance a podcast or a broadcast, if we're doing talk based uh, broadcasting, why do you need to share that music? You don't. You really don't. Um, especially when there's copyright free music that you can use to enhance your podcast or your your digital radio stream. So um, before I get into that, I will talk about uh, those sources of free 
uh, music that you can use to enhance. Remember, if we're doing talk radio or, or we're producing a talk podcast, a spoken word podcast, again, we don't need we don't need to be using copyrighted music all right only use it to enhance what you're doing all right so uh let me go on now what did they say about podcasts now we're talking about podcasts specifically again what is a podcast in terms of those who 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 are on black talk radio network a podcast is your recording that you are uploading to the platform after you have done a live radio stream and you've recorded that live re- uh, stream and now you're uploading it as a podcast so people can listen to it again or those who missed the live uh, stream can then listen later. But guess what? Podcasts don't uh, don't uh, fit into this is what they're saying or, or any of these licenses. Let me continue reading this post. Podcasts don't fit within the sound exchange limitations. And while there has been some debate about whether the pros have any licensing role in the podcast world, and and they click a link to an article, additional rights from music publishers who usually control the music composition copyright are also needed. So again, if you purchase the license, to cover your digital radio station that don't cover your podcast. You would have to get an additional copyright for podcasts. All right? So he go, they go on to write, why? A traditional downloaded podcast involves not the right to public performance of music, but instead the right to the reproduction and distribution of that music. So what they're saying is when you're doing a talk radio podcast, right, and you're talking and you're talking, and then you're like, well, we're going to take a short station identification break and, and kick some message music. And again, you know, I use music that I have permission to use from the artists themselves. Um, but uh, let's just say I, I, I'm I'm doing an illegal stream, and I'm say you know uh, we'll be right back after this break um, with our guest, and but we're gonna play some music first, and then I go playing some Marvin Gaye, uh, uh, Trouble Man, or something like that. All right, I'm illegal. I'm doing that illegal. I'm 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 reproducing a public performance of that, and then I'm distributing that in the form of a podcast. So that's totally different from the live stream or or, or public performance. Uh, It goes on to say the rights of reproduction and distribution are different from the public performance right and the permission to make reproductions and distributions are granted by different groups than are the public performance right. Sound Exchange and the pros have nothing to do with granting this reproduction and distribution right with the limited exception of I'm having trouble pronouncing this word. What is this? M M Phil uh, ephemeral rights in streaming granted through the Sound Exchange royalty. A concept too technical to be discussed here, and one that does not affect this writing. But if you are interested in these rights, you can see our article that discuss ephemeral rights in a bit more detail here. Uh, podcast downloads and on-demand streams require a specific grant of rights from the copyright holders of the sound recordings and the musical composition for each piece of the music that is being used. Podcasts are really like downloads, which also involve the right to reproduction and distribution. So, I mean, it's a lot here. They they go on and on with several more um paragraphs talking about this i have linked to this particular article um on B- in btrcommunity.com in the event section where you can also look up the past events i have posted links to all the articles that i'm sharing with you today uh, also in on our facebook page black talk media project look for the past events or today's events you'll see the links there as well um so 
this is very, very complicated. It can be very complicated. Well, it is complicated. Um, and again, for the purposes of what I do, uh, most of my media partners, we are doing social political talk programs. We're doing news programs. We're not running a, a, a music station. So why share copyrighted music in your broadcast or your podcast and subject yourself to these people and subject the platform or the station to these people, all right? When it's not necessary, all right? Let me see if there's one more article um, that I wanna share. And I think this next one will go uh, into uh, sources of copyright free music if you must have music and again we use intro music um, we play station IDs that have music but that intro music that outro music the bumper music it's all copyright free it's all copyright free so I'm, I'm not saying don't ever use music I'm just saying make your stuff legal that's what I'm saying all right, so let me see if I can get to another article. Uh, let me see. Here's another one. Now, this particular article is more directed towards music artists um, and how they can get their music into the, the emerging and ever-growing podcast industry and make money. All right, so that's what this is geared towards. It's the artists and not podcasters, but it has information that is related to what we're doing. All right, so it says, uh, let me, this is at airystake.com, A-R-I-S-T-A-K-E.com. Again, I have a link to this uh, for the uh, events that are promoting today's class, so you can find those links. How to get music and podcasts and make money legally. There's a lot of legal mumble jumbo that goes along with obtaining the rights to get music in a podcast. Dealing with mechanical licenses, public performance licenses, direct licenses, on and on. Oh, and if you overlay the music, we're talking, it's a separate license. So that's like if you, uh, for example, like, when I'm producing shows, shows I'm not hosting, although I do the same thing when I'm hosting my own show, but when I'm producing a person's broadcast, which is later, of course, going to be posted as a podcast, I with some of the bumper music that I play coming in, uh, out of breaks, I will just mute it, not mute it, but take the level down to where you can still barely hear the music while the host is talking. So that's what they're talking about, overlaying uh, uh, talking with music or putting a talk track over the music. And, you know, there are people who do podcasts that have all, they have a lot of instrumental music that's just constantly playing through their podcast. And, and I, I think, I like some of those type of podcasts. And, and so, you know, you just barely hear the music, but you hear it in the background while the person is giving the news, talking about whatever it is they're they're talking about. So this applies to them. This applies. You have to have a separate license just to do that. Okay? So again, this is a very complicated field in terms of, of the legalities of producing legal radio streams and podcasts. So it says, let me go on, way too confusing. That's the music industry for you. I'm a big fan of podcasts, been rocking Gimlet Startup and Mark Moran's uh, WTF as of late. In Startup, the hosts always credit the music used in each episode. Myron doesn't do that, but he only uses occasional janky guitar or transition from his intro ramblings into the featured guests which I assume he played for this purpose I okay let me back up a, a minute some of the sources that I'm gonna share with you where you can get copyright free music some of the uh, music you'll find in there has 
some rights reserved meaning that yeah you're free to use this in your podcast or or what have you your video or whatever but you have to give me credit at the end you know you might say the music that you heard on today's podcast was brought was uh uh, uh whatever the name of the instrumental track was and in the name of the artist all right you have that's called attribution you have to get them attribution um, but there's plenty of copyright, non-copyrighted, or I should say copyright-free music. They don't require you to give an attribution. I mean, that that would be crazy if, you know, I had maybe a minute of giving credit to every instrumental piece of music I shared in terms of the bumper music. No, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. It, it, it just wouldn't be practical. Um, so I would stay away from those type of um, uh, music tracks. All right, so he says, uh, he goes on to say, I was just hit up by Nathan Lively, who runs podcastmarketing.biz and the podcast Sound Design Live with a question about how podcasters can get legal music for their shows. Well, since this is intended for musicians, I'm going to go about this the other way. So he goes on to talk to artists about, look, okay, you're not making a whole lot of money right now with, with your hip-hop music and, and, and that kind of stuff. You're not getting picked up by any labels. You can't get your stuff on a terrestrial radio station, but you love music and you still want to be able to, to do that. Well, check out this market over here for your music. All right, if you make beats, like you got people who sell beats. They sell nothing but beats. And they sell those beats to uh, uh, artists who want to, you know, have music for their rap and what have you. So you you have, I, I actually am a member of such a website, um, although the type of license that I have um, isn't what I need from them and they want more money in order for me to use the other beats um, and to where to be copyrighted free. So I no longer subscribe to them, um, but I, I did subscribe to them uh, looking for beats to share as music. And then plus two, I was making what I call message music tracks where I would take like a speech given by so-and-so and then overlay that on music. And so I was looking for non-copyrighted music beats uh, that was tight. And that's how I came across that website and, and what have you. All right. So this what he's saying to those artists is that, listen, you could just sell your beats to people who make podcasts and just want a little intro music or want some bumper music or they want some music for the background in any audio ads that they're making for people. So that's what he's talking about. So this kind of leads us, well, he goes over, goes on into uh, some of the legalities, again, which I've already gone over, which was gone over in the previous article. But I'll share this again just to reinforce this into your mind. Unlike radio, and again, they're talking terrestrial radio, but it's no different than digital radio. All right. Unlike radio, podcasters must get a direct license to use a piece of music. AM FM radio pays performing rights organizations, pros, ASCAP, BMI, and SESAC in the U.S. for a blanket license to play all the songs in their catalogs. Terrestrial AM FM radio doesn't have to pay sound recording royalties for the artist's label which is complete bs and the u.s copyright board has recommended this law be changed for years but allows congress and in special interests all right so really though that's what when i started this class off talking about that article from about donald trump in the open letter he got from the music industry so so I'm telling you, this stuff is always changing over the years. You have to pay attention if you want to protect yourself from lawsuits. So it goes on. Digital radio. Pandora, Sirius XM, though, pays both composition performance royalties to ASCAP, BMI, 
and SESAC and sound recording performance royalties to sound exchange. As clarification, composition performance royalties goes to the writers and the publishers of the song and sound recording performance royalties go to the artists and labels of the recording. So if you recorded Alabama Shakes Don't Want to Fight and it played on Pandora, you would get the sound recording royalties from Sound Exchange because you're the artist on the recording and the members of Alabama Shakes will get the composition performance royalties from BMI, their pro, because they wrote the song. So again, this is, this is a very complicated. Podcasts, however, fall into a completely separate category most podcasts are still downloaded from the iTunes podcast app, and there's a whole bunch of other directories. So the songs used require a mechanical license, which can be obtained from Harry Fox Agency. And the podcasts which are streamed are considered interactive plays, which require yet a different license. Interactive means you can choose what you want to hear when you want to hear it, like Spotify. So they do under the do so so they don't fall under the same category as the above scenarios, which are non-interactive services or to the layman radio. Well, let me say this: um, the, although I usually do not enable this feature. Unless a person who is getting a digital radio stream from our, from Black Talk Media Project requests that we turn on that media on demand feature. So what they're talking about is that we can set up our digital radio stations to where a person can choose what they want to. All right, I'm not talking about the podcasts that have been uploaded to the platform. I'm talking about if you have a radio station and you can um, um, do in Centovacast, which is the software we license to manage the radio streams, they have a, a feature to where you can upload and, and, and upload your podcast, then you take some code that they give you and you put that on your website and then the person can choose what they want to listen to. All right, and that's coming off of the radio stream. Okay, so that's what they're talking about. So even if you have a, a, let's say, a license to cover your radio stream, what they're saying is that doesn't cover the media on demand, the interactivity that you're offering listeners and, and allowing them to choose what track they want to listen to. So, confused, they're saying these a-holes who wrote this system way back in the day intentionally made it this confusing to make sure they made all the money and you were too stupid to figure out even how to make sure you were getting all of it again he's talking to the artists um and as technology advanced the system kept up with the new realities right wrong Sure, they updated ever so slightly every few years to include new tech, but nothing drastically ever changes, and by the time the law finally passes, it's already outdated. We should burn the entire system to the ground and rewrite it from scratch to make sense in the modern era, but this will never happen again. Um, again, Congress and special interests won't allow it. Um, okay, so anyway... This again, what he's talking about again, his artists, I mean, his audience that he's directing this towards is the artist. It's the artist. But it is information that is also applicable to us as producers. We're producing media too. All right. We're producing sound recordings with our talk radio broadcast or if we're doing a podcast. So again, if we incorporate music into those broadcasts or podcasts, we want to make sure that we are legal. And it is very, very it can get very complicated. So uh, uh, unless I'm running a music station, and I'm, I, I don't see any need for me to use copyrighted music whatsoever in my talk radio broadcast. So I even put myself in a position to be sued. So he gets into 
the long story. There are three ways to get music and podcasts. Again, he's talking to the artists. He's telling them, hey, this is a whole new market that you can make music, make money off of your music by licensing it to people who make podcasts where podcasts are getting very popular. All right, so these are some of the ways. Again, this is applicable to us as podcast producers in in regards to sources of of music that we can use copyright free or it's not terribly expensive. Cuz these music licenses, man, they are expensive. They are expensive. We're talking hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year, even just for a small internet radio station. All right. So anyway, let me just share this last part. Long story short, there are three ways to get music in podcasts. Uh, Number one, direct. If you, the artist, could just hit up podcasters you like and offer to give them your entire catalog of music to use in their podcasts. If it's a popular podcast and there are ads in it, ask for a blanket all-in fee like $5,000 for unlimited use to all of your music if you have a decent catalog of 50-plus songs. If the podcast is new or less popular and isn't rolling in the ad money, then getting money out of them will be quite difficult. Offer to give them your music for free in exchange for credit at the end of every episode and links to you on their website and on the podcast description itself. So if I share some some music that an artist has submitted to us, again, this is not me just downloading their music and and saying, hey, I like this song, I'm going to share it on my talk radio program while I'm doing a little interlude or whatever. And no, these are artists who are reaching out to me and saying, hey, can you put upload this track to your station, you know, so we can get more exposure. And so, you know, on the flip side of that, if I got a popular station, meaning that a lot of people are listening to it, there are some people that will charge these artists to get their music on that station. So we can go both ways. But again, we're talking about primarily for this class talk radio news talk all right so there are artists out there again when i play their music i'll be like well that was a track from so and so and the name of the track was so and so and we need to support independent artists that's putting out good music that's me giving them credit but again i don't need a license because they are the copyright holders and they are submitting the music to me. I didn't just download it, all right? So, music libraries. The other way, this is number two. The other way, and this is the silver bullet for podcasters, is by obtaining royalty-free music from services like freemusicarchive.com or freeplaymusic.com. These are libraries of Creative Commons. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, CC, because that's how I issue our podcast or my podcast is under a Creative Commons. And you can issue different licenses to where, you know, they can distribute your podcast, but they have to give credit. Or you can give them permission to just chop it up and use clips from it. It's called a remix. So, So, you know... We are also artists when we're producing these podcasts. Um, These are libraries of Creative Commons or public domain songs. You can submit music to them if you are fine allowing everyone and anyone to use your music in their podcasts, YouTube videos, etc. for free. So again, this is why I pointed out that when you record a video and upload it, that's also considered a podcast. All the podcast is, is recorded content. Audio, visual, it doesn't matter. Uh, you won't give up any ownership, though, he goes on to say. You still own the song and maintain all rights, but you are allowing people to use your music via the Creative Commons license. They still must give you credit. That's part of the license. All right, if you go... And it's going to get into those different licenses. But if you go to YouTube, again, they have an audio library with copyrighted free music. Some of it requires a Creative Commons 
or attribution, but most of it does not. Again, most of the music does not require you to give an attribution. It goes on to say there are four licenses for Creative Commons. Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, and share alike. Attribution is applied to every license they must credit you. Um, non-commercial means they can't make money off of whatever they're using your song in. Like they can't have our ads in their podcast. Um, no derivatives means they can't remix your song. Technically, putting music be below speaking is remixing it. I talked about that earlier. So you don't want to set that license if you want your music used in podcasts. SA Share Alike allows the podcaster to remix the song as long as they share it under the same license. You choose the license you would like to assign to your song. So again, this also applies to you as a podcaster, all right? You may notice, like, um, if you submit stuff to iTunes directory or you're, you're setting up a feed burner uh, feed to pull in your podcast and then distribute them under that feed and to different platforms, it'll give you the option to how do you want to distribute this podcast? What type of com creative commons license do you want? All right. So this uh, not only these licenses not only uh, apply just for that all right it says um there are also a bunch of non-free music libraries that are one-stop shops for quick licensing licensing for indie films wedding videos podcasts and corporate videos companies like music bed music dealers pump audio beat suite and revel stock primarily licensed music for sync uh, film, YouTube, but some have podcast options as well. Some platforms, excuse me, approve every music submission and others take everything. All right. So anyway, you can go on and read the rest of this. Again, I have linked this up. Now, let me just pull up. I think I got seven minutes uh, left um, and then we'll open up the uh, lines for anybody that has any questions about uh, today's class or if you are one of our clients or you're looking to get into uh, new media tech uh, production and you have a question we're here to help that is Black Talk Media Project we're a North Carolina based uh, new media organization we are, again are a non-profit um, we don't charge um, to help the public in this regard alright so um, let me go to YouTube. This is what I use for my copyrighted music. Let me close out some of this other stuff. Uh, let's see. Give me just a second. All right. Let me get to... Go to live YouTube events. Get to the library. All right, if you have a YouTube account, what you want to do is log in to the studio. I'm in, already in the creator studio. You want to go down to where it says uh, create. So you click on create. I believe it's create. Yeah. And then the first thing there is the audio library. It also has a link to the music policies and the video editor. So listen, here is a library. I don't know exactly how many tracks are in this library, but it's plenty of them. You can get different genres from uh, ambient, alternative punk, children's music, cinematic music, classical, country and folk, dance and electronical, uh, hip-hop and rap, holiday, jazz and blues, pop, R&B, reggae, and rock. Are, um, and I guess they got more genres if I click on all genres. All right, so in, no, that's all the genres. You can even search by mood. I'm looking for angry music that, you know, makes a person feel angry. 
uh, a bright music, make somebody feel cheery and whatnot. I'm looking for some calming music or some dark music or some funky music. So you got all of these, right? All right, instrument. It allows you to choose, oh, I just want some bass. I just want a bass line. Or some drums, electric guitar, organ, piano, um, all of that. All, or you could just choose all instruments. Then you can look for the duration. How long do you want this track to be? And then the attribution. We just talked about attribution. Attribution, not required. That means we could just use the music. We do not have to give the name of the person who made it. Or, the, or attribution required. Now, these little symbols that you see here, where it has a circle with a little man, that's the Creative Commons attribution. So if I wanted to use Pilots of Stone uh, by Audionautics, which is in the alternative and punk category, I click on the attribution and it tells me, you're free to use this song and monetize your video, just say podcast. <laughs> But you must include the following in your video description. Pilots, and so again, if you use this in a podcast and you got your own platform or you're publishing to another platform, to make it legal, you want to post this in the description. You know, very last thing, you know, after your description, you want to post music used and give these people their attribution. They're, they're giving you the music for free. They're asking you to just credit them, all right? So that so do that. Now again, I prefer to use the stuff that doesn't require me to give an attribution because I'm using it for bumper music or intro music, or if somebody wants to uh, make an ad, want me to make them an ad, I, I need copyright free music to use, or I need to go purchase um, the licensing from one of these libraries that uh, provide just music for you to use in different projects. So again, I find no reason, no reason for a talk radio podcast. If I'm giving you news, if I'm giving you my opinions on something, what I need to share Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. Why I need that? in my podcast when I'm taking a station identification break or I'm coming back from break. Why Why I need to have Smokey Robinson and the Miracles playing as I come back on? When I could just use copyright free music, just to search for the music. Some of it sounds like garbage. Some of it sounds really, really good. Okay, so use free. Use the free resources. Um, if you don't like the music and the free resources, look for some of these companies that I named or were named in that article I shared with you that, that you pay and then your stuff is legal and you don't have to worry about a lawsuit and defending yourself a lawsuit in terms of a platform. Respect other people's platforms. Do you want that platform to get taken down? No, you don't want the platform to get taken down that's allowing you to distribute your content to the visitors of that platform. So keep your stuff legal. Keep your stuff legal. Now, you know, I've been in this game for a while. You know, when I say in this game, I just mean the industry. For a while. And I know that some of these platforms, man, they're going to be in for it. They're going to be in for it. And as they allow people to just upload copyrighted music after copyrighted music and, and what have you. And you know what's going to happen, though? When the music industry says, you know what? Y'all been making a lot of money over there at Blog Talk Radio. We coming after y'all. All this copyrighted music. Nobody's getting attribution. Nobody has a license on these broadcasts slash podcasts. Uh, pay up. You need to pay us. And so what do you think Blog Talk going to do? They going to try to make you pay up. They going to say, they going to point to their terms of service that say no copyrighted music or any of that. And we warned you as the art. So this is on you. Why find yourself in that situation? Okay. It, it just, it doesn't, it's not logical to me. Now, let me go just a little bit over before I open up the lines for any questions I just showed you a free audio library if you want to get your state digital radio station legal this is the only company the only company 
that I found that will combine all the different separate licenses that you need for streaming copyrighted music on your station. Again, not talking about podcasts. Oh uh, man, let me uh, try to find get to this, this webinar class. Streamlicensing.com. Okay, uh, we even link to them on BlackTalkMediaProject.org where people go to the page to where they want to purchase a digital radio stream from, from our organization. We point to these people and say, this is who you need to go to to get your stream legal. Okay? And so, we're affordable. Let me just go over some of this. They say, we're affordable with a monthly affiliate cost from $59.50. Click here to, to see the pricing. So I'm going to go explain this to you. If you're a new radio station, they're looking at your TLH. What does TLH mean? Total listening hours. That means all the people who tune into your station combined how many hours of content did they listen to. All right? So that's what TLH is. All right? So stream licensing gives you a license based on your monthly totals, your TLH totals. So let's say that you're a new station. You only got a couple of hundred people a month that's listening to your station. So you want to choose this first license, up to 4,000 total listening hours is what I'm distributing every month. So you click on that, then you go to the monthly revenue. Okay. How much revenue am, am I getting from my platform or from my station from ads that I'm selling? Oh, I'm only making about $50 a month. So we're going to choose up to $50 a month. So now it says that this plan is for a station with monthly totals up to 4,000 total listening audience that have a monthly gross revenue of $50 a month. When your station exceeds these parameters, you will need to upgrade to the appropriate plan. This plan provides ASCAP, BMI, SESAC, sound exchange, and SOCON coverage, and music data reporting through your affiliation with streamlicensing.com as long as you abide by our terms of service. All of our plans allow for in-stream commercial. All right, so how much is that going to cost me a month? $75.34 monthly plus a one-time $20 setup fee. Again, you might find like that's affordable. To me, that's not affordable. That's a bill I don't need as, uh, or I should say, Black Talk Media Project, which manages Black Talk Radio Network's digital radio station, that's, a, that's money that we will have to spend that we don't need to spend because we're a talk radio station. All right? And we're not operating like many of the terrestrial stations that target black people. We do not share a whole lot of copyrighted music. All right? So that's just, that's just money I don't need to spend that I can't really justify uh, spending. Now, there are some people that play this music because they want to attract people to their station because people like, cop, you know, that certain types of music. And then they'll mix in talk radio programming. That's cool. But again, be legal. Be legal. Do not set yourself up for lawsuits. Don't do it. So, but if you want to be covered, your radio stream to be covered, these are the people that I'm pointing you to because they cover all the major companies. But again, uh, based off of what we just read, this will not cover media on demand type stuff. It, it, it just don't. Unless they got a special license that, cause see, they deal with these companies directly. They're like the, the go-between. So um, that that is how, how you do that. Let me see if there's anything else that I need to go over. I can't think of anything else, but the main point is we want to make sure that our stuff is legal. 
not only so that if we choose to monetize the stuff, but also so that we uh, don't find ourselves on the wrong end of lawsuits or people aren't, in the case of YouTube, monetizing content that we produce because we may have shared a one minute, two minutes, three minutes of a copyrighted song or even 30 seconds. So, again, for the purposes of what we talk about or we do through the Black Talk Media Project and, and running a talk radio station, we don't, we don't need to be spending any kind of money for any kind of licenses to pay these people. <coughs> and then half the time, I hear artists complaining about these companies not paying them properly. So I just rather avoid all of that. So that's my class uh, for today. I'm going to end the video uh, now, and then we'll go into our second portion of today's webinar, where it's just open question and answering. Um, if you appreciate the work of the Black Talk Media Project, if what we do, what we share is any way helpful, helpful to you, please consider making a donation to our nonprofit new media organization, Black Talk Media Project. You can find us online at blacktalkmediaproject.org. Uh, our mailing address is Black Talk Media Project, P.O. Box 65, Mount Holly, North Carolina, 28120. But again, our website is blacktalkmediaproject.org.